It's always like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So this video, it's time to take a close look at the new the retro video game console called the Super Console X2. The Super Console X2 is absolutely something new, or is it something the same with a different label? That is what we're going to talk about today and also going to do some benchmarks just to see what we're actually going to get. Because we have basically like a lot of these boxes nowadays and the question remains is it any worth your money because sometimes some of them are pretty damn bad. <laughs> We're going to get ourselves a box inside the box that will contain the system itself. We're going to take a close look at it later. Then we're going to get ourselves like the deluxe toilet paper manuals. But this is not your typical like crap they're going to get with like most of these boxes. No, there's actually like good manuals. This is explaining how or what you're going to get with the system. And this is even explaining how you need to add files and games. We do have like the controllers that we have seen before. So with the controller, it's going to be like a mix. Sometimes you're going to get the cheap to the cheap cheap versions and sometimes you're going to get like very actually good controllers. And these are like the pretty damn good controllers. And I must say like they don't smell chemical. I did sniff them before making this video. Of course, a wicked sniffer. And then we have like the touch itself, the buttons. I'm always like to do it like this. You can just feel like how the travel is and how comfortable they are. And they are like okay quality, not the best one. The joysticks having a rubber compound. The cheap ones does have like this just plastic joystick. The D-pad does have like an okay travel not to let's say having a lot of resistance so i'm curious how they will play yeah this just feels okay in general what you're going to get inside we do have like two AAA batteries and then we have like the dongle that you need to plug it in most of the time these things are plug and play ready but and again it comes in with a manual that explains how to connect new controllers or this if you have like problems okay so inside we're going to get ourselves another let's say box and here we do have like everything that we're going to need to connecting this so it doesn't come out come here. so we do have like this cheap remote it's also like an android box because for the people who didn't know this is just actually like an android box yeah that's it like an android box with some emulator like on it nowadays they do like modify it here and there but i must say that's a quite interesting concept so the first thing i'm noticing with this new model it weighs quite heavy they do have like this extra usb card reader that you're going to get with it but we're going to take a close look at it later with a little bit of nerdy talk over here hdmi cable power supply and here we're even going to get ourselves and i must say that they i give them some extra kudos they give you like a very decent one when it comes to the yeah the usb hub normally they're going to get these really cheap ones that basically almost like fall apart when grabbing out of the box but this no, not bad at all also the power supply seems to be like an okay quality 2 amps 12 volts Nothing really fancy, but an overall, I must say, I'm surprised in the overall quality and the stuff that I'm going to get inside the box. Mmm, satisfaction. But let's talk about the card reader. I have seen this before with previous game box reviews. Nowadays, we do get in different configuration. What do we mean with this? When you're looking at the system, the first thing I must say that it weighs quite heavy. So opening up, it will maybe show like a better cooling element than we have seen before. But it's something we're going to do in the teardown. So we have like the connections, the RG45 or the WAN connection. Then we have the HDMI, AV out, input for the power supply. Something I really love are the on and off switches. The weird thing is we do have like normal 2.0. Like they're not giving us 3.0 high speed ports. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But when you're looking around the system, personally, I really love the case itself. It looks really nice. I don't know which is this a copy of an original Android box or is this actually like something they created themselves. But the point is that we don't have a freaking option to put an SD card in. So we do have like the same configuration that we have seen before in the previous videos that we're going to get ourselves like the option just to use an, or option we just need to use an SD card inside this is a 256 gigabyte edition inside a card reader that we need to plug in the system and then we need to boot it up. Oh wait, I said up almost. And that's just going a little bit warmer because you need to basically sacrifice one USB port and that's also the reason why they give you like the USB hub. Yeah, now explains a lot. It's not a big of a deal, but in my opinion, it's a little bit of a bummer because normally with the first generation of Super Console X or Android box they were using, you just can slap in the SD card inside of the system itself and you can just use the USB con yeah, the USB port for your controllers and you don't have all of these cab cables like dangling around. And you know, like, ugh, such a mess, you know? Okay, so it takes quite a long time to boot it up, but here you can see, like, giving you like a quick example. Now it's booting up every single file, every single emulator. And it will take like say a minute or so to get everything to boot up from the menu, the intro, and of course when booting up into the software itself. 
But let's take a close look at the menu. The first thing I've noticed, like this thing looks really clean. It looks very nice. Another thing for the people who have no idea, like what you can actually play with this. So if you look into the old school stuff, Amiga, you can play it with this box, but also like with older models, especially when you're looking at the Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, then we're going to get some more better performance like with your previous boxes. But when you're looking at the high-end stuff, think about like PlayStation Portable, we will have some problems, especially when you're looking into like say the frame skip, or you just want to have like some other tweaks enabled. This box is just like a fun casual thing where we can play a shitload of different emulators, but there are some limitations. So let's do a quick overview of some games and I will show you what I mean. So when you're going to look into the main stuff, we can play so much different games, but take consideration if you want to get into Tekken from MAME or you want to play some killer thing, there we're going to get some absolute limitations or unplayable situations. So for the old school stuff, I think this box brings nothing really new to the table. It's just the same stuff. Something that we can play also on a Pandora's box. But it's a really cool, fun addition. I really love the vessels at the side. So next up for the benchmark, let's try Mortal Kombat 1. They didn't mess it up this time with the controller. Oh yeah, okay, so every single main game has this same issue. <laughs> well, the reason I'm testing out Mortal Kombat is just because it's the most demanding game on here. I already mentioned before, Mortal Kombat is a system that runs pretty damn good on this, but don't expect that we're going to play some killer things. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I know the other one. <laughs> so, can I block myself? Yep, I can block myself. <laughs> All right, so let's take a close look at N64. So this is a system that will struggle on, an, let's say, a slower chip than this. You can already hear it. We're looking at the right top corner. You can see like the FPS is going around 56. It dips even to 47. But it's not all that bad. So let's boot up into the game and I will show you what I mean. Also, you can still mess around with the emulators if you want to, to see which game will run better what emulator. Let's see how we configured everything. You see some glitches going on with the shadows. So that's quite unfortunate. But it does suffer from some slowdowns. Absolutely. Need to get used to the controls. Uh, the controls suck on this game. But another thing you can also do is like, it runs absolutely like crap like i have seen some better performance so let's go to the back of the main menu and let's see if we can tweak if we can freaking tweak this thing so by pressing going into the launch title no i have a brain fart okay holding the a button or the launch here you can even like mess around with the options and advanced options that we're going to like check out if you can change the emulator so I think it was being automatically set to Mupin64. I've been messing around with it. So if you're going to look at Parallel N64, let's try it. Let's try a couple of them. Let's mess around with it. Okay, so the emulator basically gave me like a red screen of that. I'm just going to call it like that. After messing around, I noticed like Mupin64 Plus 32B runs very well in combination with this. It will like basically cap it to 30 FPS, but let's try it and let's play it now. And you see that works now way better than the previous load up and let's try a little bit of a gameplay and let's have some old school Diddy Kong farting fan 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 I don't know what I'm saying <laughs> Yo! no turbo start damn it but you can see like it runs a little bit better now it still is like when you're looking at the FPS, it's like 20, 25, so it's an absolutely stable FPS. But in my opinion, it's playable. If you don't see the FPS, you don't notice it. Where's the turbo? Ah, oh, there we go. But again, N64 is just a problem. Like, it's just a problem on these cheap boxes. We need to have more power. For example, like a mini PC that we have reviewed here on the channel. Those are like not more expensive than this, and you can run so much more and better. Alright, so next up I wanted to try some Return Fire from the 3DO, a system that I think is pretty damn cool. But I just wanted to see if it actually runs, so the last time I tried it on a similar product like this, it didn't load up. But it does now, so that's a good thing. There's a lot of 
this is such a cool game. I've played it so much back in the day on my PlayStation 1. Oh, that sound. Oh, the sound is messed up. There's a little bit of a bummer. So the FPS is basically dropping to 50, 40, 45. It's not like it's supposed to be running. So also a 3DO. Maybe it's a combination of also the emulator and the games. But again, it's... it's yeah, I don't know, man. There's not the way how you want to play it. So for the next test, let's try a little bit of Atomus Wave. This is a system that runs not great on the cheap of the cheap boxes. The optimization has been done very well because I do notice like it runs quite a good FPS, not 60 FPS all the freaking time. But I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Now you can hear like it stutters a little bit, you don't see any FPS, but I can just hear it. Yeah, there we go, 55. Next up, I wanted to try Wolf Charles for the Sega CD. I really love this game to play on my original system. I think it ha I think it has been like say more like ported to the to the Sega CD back in the day. But I love the soundtrack of this thing. Like the music is absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, Beefcake turning into Wolfie, part two. Next up, Sega Saturn, a system that has been a new addition to the Super Console Lexus. But yeah, so we do get like some mixed performance. Same story like the N64, this box is not powerful enough to run it. You can see it on the right top corner, we do have like, like 40 FPS. It's not enough to personally enjoy this game. I must say that the audio itself is not like having this weird noise that I've seen in the previous boxes. So if you don't see the FPS, it runs a little bit slow to the eye, but you can still play it. But again, it's more like personal. It's quite interesting to see that it actually runs pretty good on a basic chip that you're using inside of this machine. Another thing I wanted to try on the Sega Saturn platform is that we're going to get us like Darius Gaiden. And this is a two-dimensional shooter. And the reason I choose is because you will see that some games are not like, let's say two-dimensional, a little bit basic to emulate, not like demanding for the system. You can just play them on 60 FPS, maybe with a frame drop here and there when you're going to have like a lot of stuff going on. But it's so much more playable than, than the three-dimensional games. So it's not all that bad. And with some system we have like some mixed performance. Think about N64, but let's take a set here. We do have like a lot of stuff that we can actually play on this. All right, so next up, let's try some Tattle Life 2 because this is a system that is, oh, well, it really demands. Oh, there we go. 48 FPS, so it's not running perfectly on 60 FPS. Still have enough speed to enjoy the game. Woo, here we go, baby. I have played this game so much on the PlayStation 2 back in the day. This is such a like, cool game. But it's not hitting the 60 FPS, unfortunate. Because this box is not just powerful enough to run the Sega Naomi system. So let's move on to the next one. So let's move on to Sega Dreamcast. Yeah, so just see how a game like Soul Calibur will run. You need to take consideration, now we're seeing the FPS. So some games are still very well playable when it comes to like these, these systems. But with Sega Dreamcast, we don't have the same issue with the Naomi system. We can run it on 60 FPS. Maybe it will dip down here and there, but nothing like to worry about. But let's take a close look in PlayStation 1. We have so many freaking devices that can actually play this pretty damn good. But take consideration if you want to like doing an upscaling, we just need to have more power. I've been messing around with it with some time. Think about like the more powerful boxes that we have seen with the Super Conflict series. But also those are not like powerful enough to run every single game on two times resolution. So there we have like a need for an Nvidia Shield or a nevertheless like more power. Or just a mini PC that I've mentioned before when it comes to N64. But again, like if you just want to enjoy some games. There we go, come on. No problem whatsoever. Oh, 
Just need to grab that one. Whee! Yeah, cool jump indeed. When it comes to PlayStation Portable, there are some games that are actually like playable on here. But unfortunately, you do see some glitches here and there. So let's see how it will run with some Mortal Kombat. Man, this game is freaking slow. Oh boy. It's been a long time I've played this game, but actually like, I don't really like it playing on 30 FPS. It plays so freaking slow. Ugh. But a lot of games will be playable. Think about the two dimensional games without, with some glitches, but not a big of an issue. So pressing select to start, damn it. I wanted to show you the menu, but you can get into the menu and mess around with it. But when you're looking at the game list, it's kind of interesting to see that we do have like a lot of like, stuff on here, like God of War, that doesn't even work properly. So it's kind of weird, but okay. PlayStation Portable, in my opinion, it really sucks most of the time. Okay, so I already mentioned in the beginning of the video that this, this thing weighs quite heavy. The question remains, do we have any screws and what kind of construction do we have? So let's remove the rubbery feet. There is nothing in here. So I am guessing I need to get myself a prior tool for opening it up. All right, so let's see if I can open it up like this, or is it actually like a screw somewhere underneath? I think not. All right, so I'm also trying to be careful with this, not to ruin the case, but let's rip into here, my friend. Let's see if we, is there any, is there like a screw underneath here? Oh yeah, there is. Oh man, I completely like messed up my case here. Let's remove the screw. It's going to be a slightly difficult because I did already bend the bottom part. But now opening up, we did have like a sneak peek and when you're looking closely, you did see it. There is a big metal plate in there on the bottom and wow, this thing weighs a very heavy, very thick piece of plastic or plastic with metal attached to it. Now we have like here the thermal paste or thermal pad they're using to connect with this gigantic cooling magnet cooling block over here. So when you're looking at the inside, I think it's a quite interesting construction. They do, they try their best to improve it, but there's not a lot of information, especially when you're looking into the sea, like with the main board and this one. Like when you're looking at the specs, you do see that we have the same specs that we have seen before. So they're using a lot of thermal pads over here. So quite interesting construction. And there was no production date whatsoever on here. The next thing that we need to do is remove this metal plate. They are using all the time. And there we go. It flies away. Seriously, like, like a <laughs> basically like fly over like the camera that it like got stuck on my on my freaking like clothing. It's kind of interesting. But what I found even weird, to be honest, is like we do get ourselves the 905L. All right, so let's take a close look in the spec list because I thought it was like the X903 or something like that. Doesn't even matter. But does, uh, what does matter that we finally can see what is underneath over here. They're using the S905L. It's the same stuff that we've seen before. Unfortunate, there is nothing new. The, what they do, what they are doing over here, they like try to improve it slightly when it comes to when you're looking into the not the specification but the construction. They're using a lot of different parts now. Okay, so let's remove the final piece of the puzzle. Let's see if we can lift it out. Yep, there we go. So underneath there's nothing here, something nothing special. Hmm, there is only a code over here, but I cannot really relate when this thing has been produced. This is the Wi-Fi chip, I'm saying it correctly. So there is a lot of like information on, but nothing says when this thing has been made. So I do get this feeling they're using like old school parts and just slap it inside a new case. Mm -hmm. But it can of course be me. But nevertheless, they are using completely different construction. We're only having one RAM chip over here, storage chip. So the construction also is completely different when it comes to the layout. Normally having like two RAM chips in here. But yeah, so this is what you're going to get inside of the machine. 
But when we're looking at the AliExpress page, this thing, this thing comes with the S905 X3, two gigabytes of RAM. And when you're looking at the specifications and with the chip that is inside, it is the S905 L quad core. So if it has like one or two gigabyte, I couldn't really figure out. There was only one chip. So if it's like one gigabyte, I would not be surprised because if you look at the Android box on different pages, you will see it has sometimes one gigabyte. I have no idea what's going on over here, but there are some misinformation on the page or there is some misinformation. There is something not right. Never Nevertheless, yeah, let me know what you think of this and let's go on with the show. The Super Console X2. That sounds very exciting, but when you're looking at the specs and the things you can do with it, it's mostly like the same stuff we have seen before. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, hit that little bell and check out my other videos because there was so much stuff out there. But when you're looking deep, I was basically like deep diving into this stuff. Yeah, you do will still find a lot of the similarities that we have seen with many boxes. It's an improvement here and there. But we're still going to get the same problems. But yeah, this is what you're going to get with cheap stuff in the end. But thank you for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit that little bell. And it will be great to see you in the next video.